The first production model ship, UEES Hammerhead PCG 3748, was transferred to the United Empire of Earth Navy on August 9, 2773, in a commissioning ceremony at MacArthur in the Killian system. After six months of space trials proved uneventful and additional five holes were approved, UEES Dragonet, Garibaldi, Triggerfish, Vindel and Knifefish and allocated to the 5th Fleet to serve as a proof of concept for newly developed carrier warfare doctrine. The escort ships were dispatched to form the combat screen for a heavy carrier and spent the next two years running extensive training exercises aimed at perfecting battlegroup formations. A variety of bomber units, destroyer and cruiser squadrons served as aggressors, putting both the new ships through simulated combat trials while improving the fleet's overall understanding of spatial warfare tactics. As a result, the Hammerhead became fairly well known among up-and-coming officers assigned to this work. The general opinion was positive, with officers impressed with both the ship's combat efficiency and overall survivability. These same Hammerheads drew the class First Blood the next year when a Vandal raiding squadron encountered a skirmisher group. Though the firefight was minor, the results were clear. Eight Vandal ships were repulsed without ever entering visual range of the battle group's flagship. Six Scythes were shot down and two forced to escape, with the UEES Triggerfish scoring an impressive three air-to-air -air kills. Triggerfish would go on to destroy an outlaw raider and her escorts later that year, becoming the first ace hammerhead crew. The intelligence community remains divided as to whether the Vandal ships were simply in the wrong place at the wrong time, or if they had been shadowing the larger naval assets regularly and were now running afoul of the new navy. Pleased with the Hammerhead's proven combat capability and its new role in fleet operations, the Empire doubled their initial hull order with Aegis, and six months later signed an additional expansion that requested permanent production. Correctly sensing that they had a long-term success on their hands, Aegis invested heavily in factory and infrastructure to expand their Hammerhead lines. By 2779, five factories in three systems were turning out Hammerheads with the Navy purchasing them as quickly as possible to outfit the growing number of equipped battlegroups being made ready for war. By the middle of the next decade, the design would completely replace its predecessors, and the T-shaped design would become permanently associated with the fleet defence. The company also greatly expanded their supply chain for the ships, creating a thriving third-party parts market that continues to positively impact the Hammerhead maintenance today. The first active duty Hammerhead loss occurred in 2782 when the UEES Gliberti PCG 3762 was ambushed while on reconnaissance by Vandal RIF Group. Black box data retrieved from the wreckage indicated that the crew fought valiantly and were able to eliminate several enemy fighter bombers before suffering a crippling torpedo hit to the engine room that flooded the ship with radiation and left it unable to fight on. The surviving crew detonated improvised explosives rather than allowed the disabled spacecraft to fall into enemy hands. A second hammerhead was lost later that year in an accident. A commercial hauler serving combat group suffered a thruster, malfunction and collided with the UEES Tibero PCG-3855 while undergoing refuel rearm operations. Three were killed aboard the merchant transport and a board of inquiry ultimately placed the blame on Tibero's commanding officer for failing to recognise a supposedly, supposedly audible proximity alarm. The incident generated long-term mistrust from some naval officers who believed the crew blameless and led to the Navy's request for major sensor changes in the Flight 2 model. The fall of the Messers in 2792 was devastating for Aegis Dynamics Considered by many to have been the official ships of the Messers, they not only found themselves publicly disgraced, but many called for them to, char to be charged for their role in the fascist regime's war crimes. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Steve, otherwise known as Pin, and today we're taking a look at this absolute monstrosity, which is the Aegis Dynamics Hammerhead. Cost me a pretty penny, 12 and a half million credits. Um, but this is a ship I've been after for a while and uh, it was definitely worth the grind. We had a lot of fun in this ship. Um, so today we're going to take a tour of this beast. Um, it is a corvette sized ship, tricycle landing gear, six turrets, all packing size 4 rhinos. The ship I have right now is completely stock and it is a monster. 
this ship is an absolute monster and when it's crewed is an absolute beast um now when the ai are in it they're pretty dense okay these things are pretty easy to kill but when it's crewed it's a whole different animal um so that's what we're going to do today guys we're going to take a look at this absolute weapon okay let's begin our tour inside the mighty hammerhead then shall we so we will pop into this elevator which is one of two there are two located under the vessel and we're in okay so we will start at the rear of the ship in the engine room now as you can see it looks awesome in here i kind of feel like that this ship should have a xenomorph running around it this is definitely the home of a queen alien i can feel the vibes and as we come to the engines here look at that that is amazing to look at have no idea what the particles are hopefully i'm not going to get radiation poisoning but still i could quite literally make that my screensaver and be very happy with that so we move up to the back here and i'm assuming this will be some sort of engineering uh engine monitoring panel i would guess we have a cargo ramp there we also have a ramp a ramp a set of stairs that take us to the rear turret up there we will check that out in a moment as you can see it's uh, pretty symmetrical we have another engine component here right at the back spewing out all that lovely blue stuff and here we have some elevator controls okay so we can get some SEU on there um, not very much though it's not really a cargo ship this will be more for sort of storing crew supplies etc I would have thought ammunition food medical supplies um, and things of that nature I think you could possibly get a grey cat rock in there I don't see why not I don't see why you would do that but I do think you could get an Ursa Rover in there as well it might be a little bit tight I haven't tried it um, I can't see any reason why we couldn't get a small vehicle in there definitely a dragonfly maybe a Nox um, but we do have a cargo elevator which is going to be very useful in the future so this will be very important for more than likely crew supplies fuel that sort of stuff so as we head towards the rear this will be the rear turret located at the bottom so we'll hop in this now and up we go as you can see four rhinos okay it's the equivalent of having six constellations strapped to a hole um, so this thing has got some serious firepower I haven't upgraded it at all if I was to change things I think it would be the shields um, I'm more than happy with the rhinos especially with the amount we've got you could swap them out um, for other variant type laser repeaters I guess is what I would stick to um, but at the moment I see no need for changing the guns from what they are um, they do the job as we have ample firepower aboard this ship so that's the lower rear turret um, which is also a very important place on the ship to get the full potential of the firepower so this is the engine room and it is like I said just jaw dropping how cool it is in here very nice place to be kind of kind of feels cold though I think it's kind of the, the blue and that random particles of radiation death that it spews out and above the cargo hold here you can see like a cargo crane which will come in useful if it becomes operational for the cargo refactor um, so that's nice so that is the engine room Okay, moving on, we'll make our way through these corridors, and I love these corridors. Look how they're really well lit, everything's labelled, nice and wide, plenty of room for your crew to run around. And you'll notice there's lots and lots of um, padding on the walls, so that if the ship is in a combat uh, scenario, the crew aren't going to get injured or thrown around and concuss themselves with all the padding so I like that and 
the floors are nicely labelled and lit. So let's head into the crew quarters then. As you can see, we have multiple bunk beds for the crew. There are two showers in here as well. All of them nicely labelled. Pretty, pretty spacious in here. Um, everything screams military with the green and orange sort of paint around this ship. But again, this is where your crew are going to be sleeping. And they do get some very handy storage bins. Lockers. I don't think there's a... No, that's not a storage bin, but there's ample storage there for everybody. Nice and spacious here. Kind of like it. Plenty of space for the crew. So that is the crew barracks on board the mighty Hammerhead. Okay. So moving on from the crew quarters, we will now come to a engineering bay. As you can see, we've got some components here, radar and life support, clearly labeled with that sort of industrial orange. And then here we have a small engineer station. Again, with some modules. So this is where your space engineer is gonna be in charge and able to access some of the components for the ship. Um, he does get this engineering panel, which will become useful in the future. He'll be able to access and diagnose problems with the ship via this terminal, I would have thought. We power it on, it doesn't really do anything at the moment. So when this becomes operational, this will be a good station. Easy to find as well. It's good to know that the engineer has his own space, I like it. So that's the wonderful engineering station. This ship just screams aliens for me. It really does. It's definitely got that alien sort of xenomorph vibe. Okay, continuing on from there. We take a left, we come to some blast doors. And located through here are the numerous escape pods. Escape pod 4. Three, two, and one. Very nicely lit. Easy access. Again, thanks to these large corridors, movement and traversal in this ship is very easy. We have the rear left turret. We won't get into because we'll be here all day if we were to <laughs> enter every single turret. Again, very nicely lit and easy to access. Um, so once you've been around the hammerhead once or twice, it's actually very easy. And it's nicely signposted everywhere. So that is the some of the escape pods and the rear left turret. There's a lot of detail in this ship. And again, just look at how nice and easy it is to find your way around. It is a very big ship. It's 112 metres long, I believe. Um, I've been in it three or four times and already I'm fairly comfortable on navigating my way around it because this everything's nice and signposted and easy to find. Very large wide corridors. It's just, it really does give you a military feel. Everything's very well organised. We have an elevator here that takes us up to the kitchen galley area on the right here this is the captain's quarters oh no it's not sorry it's the top turret so this turret sits right on top of the ship with an excellent 360 view obviously now the whole turret is gimbaled Rather than having four weapons that are gimbaled, the turret itself unfolds from the ship and it is the frame that it sits on is in fact gimbaled. 
which is a fairly genius way of making the turrets more effective. Again, very nice 360 as you would expect from a ship designed to hurt everything with multiple turrets, kill fighters, destroy incoming torpedoes, all that sort of good stuff. Hammerheads often accompany Idrises. So that is the top turret. Opposite the top turret we have the captain's quarters. So let's go in here and have a look of what the captain has at his disposal. So we have a nice desk, again padding on the walls, nicely lit, plenty of light, nice bookshelf, a couple of monitors for him, a display cabinet, which will be cool. Be nice to get some, maybe subscriber flares in there. If we could do that in the future, that would be awesome. So he has a monitor panel built into his desk. He has one behind him, numerous bookshelves. Not particularly comfortable, but it's not supposed to be. Through here, we have his sleeping quarters. Couple of shelves. And he does have his own ensuite bathroom for that privacy. I am a vampire, I don't have a reflection. I'm the world's first space vampire. Hot and cold, very basic. Um, but not a two in one toilet shower combo, which is nice. So that mixes up. And we have a plug in the floor. We have good drainage, it would seem, because apparently the captain's quite messy. And he has uh, some storage racks above his bed there. Numerous buttons and switches. Yeah, not a bad little space for the captain. Here's his uh, wardrobe. Military uniform, I gather. Not sure about those shoes. They're a bit... I don't know. Don't look too military to me. So this is the captain's quarters overall. Quite a pleasant space for the captain, I would say. Okay, moving on from the captain's quarters, we come out, there's the elevator and the top turret that we passed earlier, so now we're going to head in this direction. Down here we have the rear right turret and some more escape pods, but what we're going to do now is make our way through these enormous corridors towards the bridge. Now you'll see there's a big gap in the hammerhead, that was there to save weight and make it a bit more efficient when travelling. Um, so it has like two separate compartments with a massive gap in the middle for weight saving. As this ship does weigh a fair amount as you would imagine. There was an, uh, an elevator we passed on the right is one of the exit points of this ship. So as we make our way towards the bridge we have front left turret right in front of us. And lots of mechanical arms, I think. I'm not entirely sure what these are. But it does look very... They're painted green, very military. Green and orange. So this is the front left turret through here. Again, very easy to navigate on this ship. And I love the steel grates on the floor. And all the little touches in here that scream military. It really does sort of give you that military feel. The very front of the ship, so this is where you will dock at a space station, okay, so actually at the front of the ship it makes life a hell of a lot easier when doing space station docking. We have some hand print, uh, hand print recognition systems here, which are cool. So this is the airlock where you will uh, use the front of the ship to dock to space stations and possibly other ships. The bridge is located on the lower deck of this ship. Um, which is kind of unique because the cockpit is located under the ship. 
and as we go in you can see we have pilot seat and co-pilot seat and it does look really really cool in here I love this cockpit it is fantastic lots of detail buttons look I like how the seats hang from the ceiling via those giant swing arms so let's hop into the pilot seat and this is where you'll be flying your crew to go cause absolute chaos in this ship so we have multiple MFDs as you would expect co-pilot does too above the pilot in this center console we have all sorts of buttons um, open exterior all that sort of stuff the view's not too bad down here and it, you sort of you're in the when you're in the cockpit um, you are extremely close to the ground it is a little bit daunting at first until you get over it so we have open exterior engine on engine off all that good stuff plenty of buttons in here that all look really cool again that nice sort of green and orange letting you know this is a military ship when you see something kill it so not a bad view in here it's it's um takes a while to get used to it kind of threw me having the cockpit underneath the ship so to speak um it's not the fastest of ships either uh i think it's 109 scm speed um, but it does have some very good components which we will go over in a bit so that's the cockpit and a very cool looking cockpit at that really like it Okay, now let's take our time and navigate to the top of the ship. So at the back in the engine room, we have another elevator here. We're just going to hop in this. Up we go. And here we have two monitor um, panels hanging from the ceiling. And we are, in fact, above the cargo engine room. We do have another engineer station here. So that's two. Um, which will become very useful for dedicated crew that are the engineers. They have two access points to get to the components. Then we will make our way up these large corridors and to the right we have a crew station. So let's go through this door. And in here is where the crew are going to come chillax, eat some food. You'll see there's two monitors there. I really like that sort of giant light above the table that really does look cool I can see people sitting around there talking about all the vandals they've shot over the years etc multiple places for plates cups storage you know that basic stuff we have some drinking water modules in the floor and some more maintenance access there very sort of basic galley here um, I'm assuming a microwave coffee coffee machine so yeah it does actually have a cooker there as well look that's pretty cool um, not sure what this is maybe a, a rubbish bin or something um, kitchen tools it says there so yeah very cool and then through here we have a supply storage room um, now I'm, I'm gonna guess this is purely for food right you'd have your storage all your food in here uh, ready to be prepped for the crew in the galley with another monitor here maybe keeping track of what goes out of date and when perhaps or ordering more food that you're running out of you can put a I don't know a sort of resupply beacon out maybe I don't know these all just me throwing conjecture as usual but very cool very handy nice and spacious I can see a lot of downtime people just socializing and uh 
eating their food here. Very cool room indeed. Nicely lit. Love that light above the table. Okay, so we're going to exit the galley, if you will, and we have another elevator here that will take us to the lower deck, if it opens. So, on the elevator we go. And that brings us to the top turret and the captain's quarters, which is just on the left here. So we've done full circle. And that is pretty much everything that you will find on the hammerhead. Right, that concludes the tour of the inside of the mighty hammerhead. Now we're going to see the good stuff. Now we're going to see pandemonium at its best. Now we're going to see just how deadly this ship can be in a combat situation. So we have six turrets with four size four rhinos gimbaled okay and uh, this ship was absolutely brilliant during the nine tails event um we were one crew member short but we did our best so um even with the one crew member short we were still able to wreck quite a lot of ships uh during the nine tails event and it was absolutely awesome to see just how devastating a human manned crew hammerhead can be. So let's take a look at its combat performance. Okay, so here we are. We have the all four turrets manned. The only turret that isn't manned is the rear turret. Um, and this is during the Nine Tails event, and you can just see how awesome this ship is look how the turrets move on their frames so it's the entire turret which is gimbaled and not the guns themselves which means the hammerhead has excellent coverage when in combat situations um, it's very 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 deadly um, especially if someone is silly enough to get in range um, there was a little bug there for some reason I could not close the cargo ramp at the back and uh, we're in the cockpit now he's giving you a feel for what it's like to try and fly this thing um, takes a little bit of getting used to um, but once you get the hang of it you're golden um, just the firepower is insane the DPS is insane there are a lot of missiles on this ship um, Again, I felt no need to change it around. Um, but yeah, we had an absolute blast in this thing. As you can see, we're taking on another hammerhead here who is just getting trounced by other ships helping us out. 
So what we'll do now, while we um, take a look at the combat performance, we'll go over some of the components that this ship has, and some of the missiles, as we can, uh, as you can see, we take on this Idris and give him what for. Um, this was just an epic experience. The Hammerhead Wind Crude is absolutely fantastic to fly. Really enjoyed it. As you can see, it just looks amazing. And there is an Idris that we're going to go give a headache to. Anyway, let's now talk about some of the components that you can expect with this ship. Now, I'm going to go over the stock components and not make any suggestions as to what you to put in it. Because that's entirely up to you. I don't see the point of that. So, we will quickly um, gloss over the components for this ship and, yeah, talk about their performance a little bit. Okay, guys, this ship comes equipped with the following. Radars, one, size two. Computers, size two, times two. Power plants, two, size three. Coolers, two, times size three. And shield generators, two, times size three. Um, so the power plants are super drives. The coolers are mercury. And the shield generators are stronghold. Um, these are the stock um, components in terms of uh, core components, if you will. Fuel intakes, two size twos. Fuel tanks, two times size threes. Quantum drive, obviously, one size three, which is the Karma. Jump drives, one times size three. Quantum fuel tanks, one times size three, so fairly decent fuel tank. Main thrusters, so we have four times size three and maneuvering thrusters four times size three now in uh it's quite horrible to fly in atmosphere it handles like a well a brick as you would expect um but in space it's not too bad it is maneuverable enough to devastate multiple foes weaponry as we know it has six man turrets with four size four rhinos missiles eight times size five they are the MSD-543 Missile Racks, and it has four times size three Viper 3s. Um, so, certainly packs a punch. In-game, it costs 12.5 million. Um, the pledge price is 725 standalone dollars. Original, $650. Warborn, $600. Length, 112 meters. Beam, 75 meters. Height, 16 meters. Combat speed is 105 meters per second, maximum speed of 1,000 meters per second, mass 4,617,000 kilograms. So, overall, a very, very beefy ship. So let's talk about, should you get one? Well, here's the thing. Um, I love this ship. It's absolutely brilliant, and as you can see, we are having a blast, me and my buddies here. There's surrounded by enemy hammerheads. There's an Idris we're trying to kill. It's all very messy. The whole thing was just awesome. We've lost our front shield. However, how many times have I taken it out? Not enough, because um, we're a, I'm in a relatively small log, and um, you know, you really do want the full potential of this ship and to do that you do need to have a fully crewed vessel that being said uh, we didn't do too badly uh, we lost our right rear uh, right front gunner there as you can see you had to go afk and we've lost our rear turret but it was still packing a devastating amount of firepower i highly recommend it that you should try and take this ship out with your buddies if um you can do so for the events in the future xeno threat Nine Tails, Jump Town. Um, this ship really will come into its own. It is devastating um, when crewed. And as you can see here, we are just laying waste to this Idris. It has no answer. He is getting absolutely smashed to bits. And we loved every second of it. Very cool ship. Um, quite pricey. It did take quite a substantial amount of time for me to grind it out. Um, my original aim was to get the 890 jump, and then I thought, you know what, hammerhead. And I'm glad I did, because the fun to be had with this ship is just crazy. We have a constellation there, f flying in front of our uh, devastating arsenal there. Um, but yeah, 
it packs a punch. It's really the interior is fantastic. Um, lots of fun. Lots to be fun. Uh, lots of fun to be had with the Hammerhead for sure. It is certainly a ship you will want in your hangar at some point, especially if you've got the friends to play with. Um, highly recommend it. I had so much fun. So that, guys, has been my video on the Aegis Dynamics Hammerhead. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, next video will probably be on the Pioneer. I think I'm going to put a, together a video on the Pioneer. So if you enjoyed today's video, guys, and want to see the Pioneer video, you know what buttons to press. And I, of course, will have more Star Citizen content en route to your location soon. Thank you very much for watching. Cheers. Take care.